and we bring on my man, the host of Knicks Fan TV on YouTube, CP the Franchise, joins us right now. CP, my friend, thanks for being with us this morning. Jake, good, good morning, good morning, man. How's everything going? Pleasure to be back on with you. Absolutely, man. So I'm pumped up. You know, you you and I, of course, huge Knicks fans. And, you know, when I see the details on the Kemba Walker deal, that they get him for two years, eight to $9 million a year, and OKC's paying all the money pretty much on his buyout. To me, as a Knicks fan, yep. I'm ecstatic. What's your take on the move? It's an absolute steal, Jake. It's an absolute steal, man. I mean, to get Kemba for a two-year, $16 million uh, uh, um, total, it's an absolute steal. You know, once we uh, re-signed all these guys, we re-signed Derrick Rose, Alec Burks, uh, Nerlens Noel, and then we also added Evan Fournier, it was reported that the Knicks were still in the point guard hunt. And so Dennis Schroeder's name popped up, Reggie Jackson's name popped up. But once... OKC drafted more guards. They had, they drafted um, Josh Giddy out of Australia, and they drafted Trey Mann from Florida. They already drafted uh, Theo Maladon last year. They re-signed Shea Gilzis Alexander to a huge deal. I figured uh, Kemba Walker was going to shake loose at some point. And so it, it was a pleasant surprise uh, to hear the news that, that Kemba was coming back home to the Knicks, man. I was absolutely ec- ecstatic. To me, the old Knicks would have just traded for Kemba Walker. You know, the new yeah, Knicks right. are able to work back channels, understand he's getting bought out, and get him on yeah. such a cheap contract. What do you think it, it means going forward? Do you have a guy like Kemba? I know he's from New York, and Knicks fans already loved him before all this. But what do you think it means that, you know, here's the guy that yeah. wanted to come and play for the Knicks? Well, for one, you have to give credit to this Knicks front office. I mean, I have to figure that Brock Aller, their capologist, had a lot to do with it because it's it was the way that they structured Derrick Rose's contract using his early bird rights to extend him is the reason why they it freed up $8 million for them to sign Kemba Walker. And so I, I think it, this is a fantastic move for the organization for the number one reason because you have a guy that knows the stage. He knows the bright lights of Madison Square Garden. He can easily take the pressure even on one leg you, we, we know the durability is going to be an issue but he understands the magnitude of the situation that comes with wearing this jersey and playing in Madison Square Garden we saw in the playoffs where you know Julius Randle and, and a lot of the inexperience showed and, and they kind of looked uh, you know bright eyed and, and bushy tailed but Kemba Walker knows the stage so he's going to come in he's going to be a point guard that can attack the rim He's going to be able to excel in the pick and roll, whether it's with Julius Randle, Mitchell Robinson, another scoring option, another shot creator. You know, shot creation was sorely needed, especially in this playoffs. And so you add a one at the floor general in, in Kemba Walker and then at the two with Evan Fournier. So I, I thought it was a great, uh, great signing for, for the Knicks. Give me your take on the Fournier signing. Obviously, you know, I, I said it at the top. Yeah. You were joining us. He, he replaces Reggie Bullock. So for me, it's a no-brainer by the Knicks trying to upgrade. Yeah. Absolutely a no-brainer. You know, again, when it came to shot creation in the playoffs, it was sorely missed. And you saw that. It was, it was so evident with Reggie Bullock because in the playoffs, the Hawks were able to park Trey Young on him. And, and he had no impact. You know, Reggie Bullock could do absolutely nothing with the ball because he just can't put the ball on the floor. And so with Fournier, you get that. You have a guy who can put the ball on the floor. We know that he's a great three-point shooter. He shot 46% on six attempts in those 16 games with Boston. Overall, on the season, he shot 40% last season. He can play make. Evan Fournier finished in the 78th percentile in assist percentage as well. So you have a little bit of playmaking potential there. So I think him and the, the addition of Kemba Walker, I think it opens up our offense even more. It creates additional spacing for Julius Randle, for RJ Barrett to operate because you now have guys who can sit on the three-point line who you have to respect. And so I think Fournier is definitely going to bring a lot on the offensive end. Now, how he fares defensively is yet to be seen because that was one thing with Reggie Bullock uh, that Tom Thibodeau valued in him was that he would oftentimes guard the best player on the opposing team and he was switchable so sometimes he would guard threes sometimes he would guard twos sometimes he would even guard some of the point guards and he, he wasn't a lockdown defender by any stretch but he definitely added a lot of defensive versatility and so we'll have to see how their team defense is impacted by the addition of Fournier. CP, the franchise with us here on Twitter. You can follow him at Knicks Fan TV. Of course, if you are watching on YouTube, you know this guy, the host of Knicks Fan TV on YouTube. Uh, the news of the day, CP, right before I came on the air this morning, Julius Randle, the Knicks do decide to extend his contract. Now, what's your take on that decision? Yeah. Do you think the Knicks were going to 
wait, just pick up the option for another year, or are or were you expecting something to get done between the Knicks and Randall? Well, I knew they were going to take care of him um, because, you know, coming off of the season that he had, look, this was the most improved player of the league, a guy who garnered MVP votes consideration, 24 points per game, 10 rebounds per game, six assists and 41% shooting, career highs all the way across the board. Julius Randle deserved to be taken care of. You know, the Knicks do not make the four seed or the playoffs without his contributions. And so I knew they were going to take care of him. I just didn't know when, you know, I I thought that Julius would have gambled on himself and he could have been eligible for $200 million if he waited it out. But I think the two sides coming to this agreement now, I believe that he kind of hedged against potential regression. You know, will those shooting numbers come down? Will that production come down a little bit? And injury risk. And so both sides coming to this deal, uh, it, it just shows that they're trying to take care of each other. And I think it's a good signal to the league. That's a, it's an act of goodwill on both sides. What could be expected now? From this Knicks team, obviously a lot will hedge on you know, the, the growth of some of the young players on the team, like an R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly. But from everything they've done now this offseason, they've spent all the cash yeah. space, they've made some moves. What are your thoughts on just where the Knicks are right now in your relation to the rest of the Eastern Conference? Yeah, well, you have to factor that uh, the East has certainly gotten better when you look at the moves that the Chicago Bulls have made. Look at what Miami has done. Uh, Indiana, you have to factor in. Boston, you still have to factor them uh, being somewhere competitive. Charlotte has certainly gotten better. But I think for the Knicks, what they've done this offseason is they they preach continuity, stability. They're, they're saying that they're going to continue to compete with the acquisitions of Kemba Walker, Evan Fournier, Devin, Derrick Rose coming off the bench. And you hope that their young players continue to take an uptick we saw a great uh improvement from rj barrett in his second year hopefully that's the same for emmanuel quickly we hope that obi toppin can come around now that he'll have a consistent pick and roll point guard to play with off the bench whether that is kemba walker or derrick rose so i think it's great for him hopefully we'll get to see quentin grimes and uh, miles mcbride the two rookies that they drafted uh this past draft hopefully we'll get to see them in the rotation as well and so the knicks have put themselves in a position to continue to stay competitive in the east hopefully they continue to focus on player development and at the same time these acquisitions by getting Derek rose nerlens noel alec burks on team friendly two-year deals plus uh one-year team options full team options and evan fournier on a three-year deal plus a plus a team option it gives them contract flexibility in the event that they need to make trades you know in the offseason or during the mid uh trade deadline mid-season it gives them the flexibility now where they can take some of these guys they still have six first round picks nine second round picks in the next four years where they can make moves to continue to upgrade this team cp give me your thoughts on what brooklyn has done so far this offseason and then what the lakers have done as those two teams are if you look at the odds right now for the nba title still lakers and that's your top two teams favorite to win the whole thing yeah, well, uh, I, I think the nickname for the Lakers are the AARP team, <laughs> to the chagrin of, of LeBron James. I mean, you know, Carmelo's my guy. I wanted to see him play for the Lakers the, the year that they won the championship in the bubble, but he's back with them uh, two years later. I, I love that acquisition. You got to love the Russell Westbrook acquisition, even though spacing may be an issue for the Lakers. I, I just think, you know, they'll find a way to figure it out, and, and he'll take some pressure off of LeBron James and Anthony Davis in terms of the, the wear and tear over the course of the season and so the Lakers are gambling they put all their chips in the middle once again by by signing all these vet, vet minimum contracts Trevor Reza, Dwight Howard uh, but they did sign Malik Monk and Kedrick Dunn so they have some young upstart players as well who can contribute so I think the Lakers you have to factor the Lakers to be a favorite in the West if they can stay healthy for the Nets look I, I thought the Nets had a, had a pre, pretty decent draft getting Cam Thomas getting Dayron Sharp out of uh, North Carolina Cam Thomas a sharpshooter out of or the the bucket getter actually out of uh lsu patty mills i thought was a great pickup for them off of the bench and so yeah you have to factor those two teams if healthy uh they will once again be the favorites to contend for the championship but jake you never know you never know in this game injuries play a factor chemistry plays a factor and that's why you saw the milwaukee bucks raising the trophy this year so you just have to let the season play out it's an 82 game grind and and we'll see who's uh who's the last man standing finally cp has uh team usa basketball have they figured it out i mean they're going to the gold medal game they'll they'll potentially take on the downshits in that game which should be a lot of fun what what have been your Mm -hmm. thoughts on the olympic team 
as long as they have Kevin Durant, they always have a chance, man. I, I stayed up and watched that game against Australia early this morning, and uh, the Team USA found themselves down 15 points quickly. The Australia defense was stifling. They were hitting three-pointers all over the place. FIBA Patty Mills is a legend. <laughs> I mean, Patty Mills is an absolute legend on the Olympic stage, and, and he, he put some fear in Team USA. But no, man, I, I think with, with Kevin Durant there, you saw some excellent contributions from Devin Booker. I think Team USA will, will be right there. France just beat Slovenia, led by Evan Fournier and, and Rudy Gobert, 90-89. to 89. I believe Luka Doncic missed a, a buzzer beater there. So I, I think Team USA should be in a good position to win the goal. But France has been a, a top contender even since the World Cup a few years ago beating Team USA, so Team USA is going to be out for revenge, but I think, listen, with Kevin Durant in tow, I think they'll find a way to get it done and, and take home the gold. CP, you're the best man. Continued success. Love watching you. Do what you're doing on the YouTube channel, what you're doing for every Nick fan out there, an NBA fan. So good stuff as always. Thanks for being with me. Thanks a lot, Jake. Have a great weekend, and always appreciate you having me on, man. CP, the franchise. <laughs>